Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about language interop, and in particular, interop with C, and in particular, C strings. Now, C has been a cornerstone of systems programming for decades, and it's also often a good choice for writing performant code to use as libraries for use from various other programming languages. C is sort of like a common denominator for everybody to work with in many cases. Uh, however, C does have its faults, and there are languages out there, people out there trying to replace and or compete with C for, this, for C's space. Zig is one of these languages. Notice that Zig competes with C instead of depending on it. In some cases, that means that they want to make their own choices of how they want things to work that they feel is right rather than just always doing things the C way. One example of this, string literals are UTF-8 encoded byte arrays. Uh, so we see here, we have this string literal, H-E-L-L-O, which is five bytes, and that's a type of it. And whether it's statically known size or dynamically known size in terms of slices, uh, Zig wants to look at string data this way as a pointer and as a size. This has advantage of you can immediately say whether some kind of access is out of bounds. You can immediately say what the size is. You can also slice substrings without having to allocate new memory if you can say where does it start and how big it is. And let's look into that, but let's look at it in C++ for a variety of reasons. So let's have a basic just hello world here. We have a string hi, which is its C type, const care star is a pointer to some kind of string data in static program memory. And now notice also that this is somewhat equivalent to having an array, which is h, i, null, care. These two lines are equivalent to each other, and both are somewhat similar to this, but the difference is in these cases, you actually get this string data on the stack, as opposed to being a pointer to uh, static program memory where that's stored. But it's three characters, h, i, and zero, where h, i is the main string data, and this says the string is over. If we run this program here, we've compiled it here, C++17 for our demo today, and we run it, we get what we expect to see, which is high. Now, we don't just want to run the program today. Today, we also want to use a tool called Valgrind, which has a subtool called memcheck. When we run it inside of Valgrind, Valgrind is actually managing and handling and watching the memory instead of just uh, the normal program execution. Here's our output high. <coughs> Valgrind also tells us we had two allocations, two frees, and total uh, allocations worth of 73,728 bytes. Uh, notice they said we had no leaks and zeros from zero contexts. So there weren't any memory errors that detected either. The question is, where do these allocations come from? I didn't try to allocate memory. Well, just simply including these header libraries and or uh, header files and or writing the standard out using the GNU Live Center C++ library on this computer has this as a baseline of the amount of allocations that are going to be happening. So we're going to compare what we do later to this baseline. Uh, now, let's say we're going to ignore for the moment uh, C interop, and let's just say we want to live in C++ land for a while. Well, arguably, the idiomatic way to work with strings in C++ is, since C++ 17 at least, is string view. String view is sort of like as if I had a structure here. Struct string with both a size and a pointer and I pass those two things around instead of just the pointer data itself. Only when we look through uh, standard string view, we're going to have a little more of an abstract view into things. Let's write a function here that pretends we're calling some kind of service. We're going to send a message to a service, and we're going to send it as a string view. And really all we're going to do is just write to send it out. It's a proxy for pretending we're actually calling some kind of service here. I'm going to get rid of these arrays also. So I say send message uh, text we should have the same behavior we had before. So if we compile it and run it inside of Valgrind, we still see high, we still have two alex and two freeze. We just pulled out a different function, cool. What's well, something slightly more interesting? Let's split this up into multiple words and send each word as a separate message. So let's make a function called send words, which is also going to take a string view for its input, only we're gonna split it up now. So let's start at the beginning and loop while we're still within our string. Let's figure out where the next space is. This is not a totally robust uh, string splitter. It just gets the job done for our current needs. Let's find the next space starting from start. And we need to see if we hit the end of our string.
If so, I just want to set it to the end of the string itself. Now let's get a word out. Word equals uh, text substring starting from start for length stop minus start. And let's send the message of that word. And then uh, start from after the space we found. And let's go ahead and change this to send words. Let's compile and run this and see if we get one word at a time now, which would be hi, there, you, according to our string we're going to split up. Compile, run. There's our hi, there, you, still two Alex and two freeze. <clears throat> In this case, the two Alex and two freeze are still the same ones as before because we're not actually allocating the memory anywhere. When we are getting a substring from our string view, we're still referencing this same memory from the static area of our program and these pointer locations just with an associated size so it only prints out the correct thing when I send it to standard out here. Uh, so for example, if we uh, let's instead of calling uh, an, some kind of function that's aware of C++ and its idioms, let's go on ahead and do a version that, we believe, that we're going to pretend is some kind of external uh, C library. And if it is an external C library, it's going to probably take a const care star instead of taking a string view, because string view is very much C++. And let's use printf just so we feel comfortable with the idea we're doing C here. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but let's do it this way. So instead of calling send message, let's call send message C for the C version of this. First thing we're going to find out is this won't compile, because while C++ will automatically convert uh, my const care star into a string view. It won't automatically convert it back out again to the other one. But we have this handy method here called data, which will get our pointer back out again and send only the pointer across to our send message C function. And we're pretending we're calling some separate C library to send this message to a service. It compiles and it runs, but it doesn't do what we want it to. Hi there, you, there, you, and you. Still two Alex and two freeze. We haven't allocated any memory. But the thing is that when I'm passing this pointer, over here to this function, I no longer have the size associated with, with it. So I have the starting positions right, hi, there, and you, but the only null care is at the end here. And our data is not mutable. Had it been modifiable data, maybe we could have done some crazy thing and changed the data as we're going, but mutable data has its own problems anyway. And string view gives you an immutable view of your data. So this is what we're with right now. We want to actually send a message where we have null characters at each point along the way. We have to make copies of original data, or at least one copy. But the obvious thing to do is make multiple copies. We can say auto copy equals some new string from our string view. And standard colon colon string is going to uh, null terminate the data when it copies it. So if I use the copy of the data instead of the original one, and I compile and run it, I get hi there you now. So that's great. Notice I actually didn't make any extra allocations either, but this is deceptive because live standard C++ from GNU has a small object optimization inside of its standard string implementation, which causes it when I have small strings, it doesn't actually allocate memory. It sneaks it in uh, in a more efficient fashion. So I'm going to make these strings longer here so we see the actual things that are happening. I'm going to split it across multiple lines so we can actually see everything at once here. Let's do some stuff. Uh, very long identifier, some other long path.txt, or maybe just standard vector of standard string. Notice it's pretty easy to have relatively long strings. And these ones right here, notice I'm going to create a new string each time through my loop for each one of these words here. They're space separated still. And if I compile it, and run it, in addition to the two allocations we had before, we now have three others, one for each of those words that I allocated. So now I have five allocations total. I could optimize this by bringing a single string out of here and only changing the content of that string each time through. That would be more efficient. Instead of one allocation per word, I'd have only one allocation per function call. In other case though, we definitely lost efficiency over what we had if we could just live in our own idiomatic C++17 land. We have to, because we're calling C, at some point create a copy of our data so that we can null terminate it so we can call a C function. 
And if we imagine we have a much more complicated program with functions calling functions and so on in another deep fashion, we might have many more allocations than necessary which to slow us down, or maybe even many more allocations all at the same time, such that all data lives in memory together and becomes a memory hog as well. These are issues that can happen if you're not careful and when you don't have conveniences like this available. So the question is, do I really expect to see this kind of thing in a C library? And the answer is yes. So for example, in the GTK GUI library, if I want to set the text for a label, I'm going to pass it a care pointer, no size available. If I try to use a simple direct media layer library, which is often used for like saying creating games, I want to create a window, my window title is going to be a const care pointer. In the free type library, if I want to open up a font, I'm going to pass in here a pointer to character without an associated size. Now, this is an example of how libraries and languages work together. As the creator of C++, Bjarne Strauss-Strup likes to say, uh, library design is language design. And it's hard to separate the two from each other. That said, there are examples of C libraries, such as the Harf Buzz Text Shaping Library, which in addition to a pointer, you get a size. Or the SQLite database library, where you create a prepared statement, in addition to the string, the pointer to the data, you have a size. And this allows you to be more efficient. We could have used our string views more efficiently directly when calling these instead. So it does depend on which libraries you're working with. But there definitely are C libraries out there, and many of them. If you want to use them and you're dealing with a different representation of strings, you're going to have to make copies of your data so you can null terminate things. Which leads us back to Zig. Here is Zig 050, which again is a current release of Zig. And the uh, strings which are basically sized pointers to character data. Well, apparently they felt motivation. Uh, this is the current master branch and maybe it will stick, maybe it won't. But now they say string literals are single item constant pointers to null terminated UTF-8 encoded byte arrays. Let's see this. Instead of saying it's five bytes, it's now a pointer to constant five bytes with a null care afterward of our bytes again here. Uh, and this is actually sort of cool that it actually has this null terminated string concept in the language. You probably could do some cool things with that in terms of interop here. And presumably the motivation behind this is making interop with C easier. However, presumably ideally idiomatic zig code is still going to want to be able to deal with things from a nice sliced sized perspective because I already showed, at least in certain kind of use cases, that's much more efficient. What's the right thing to do in a language? If you're trying to make the next C killer, how do you do things? That's a hard question to answer. I have to say that for another day. Bye, y'all.